Hello everybody, this is part 2 of my triple A video. Um, I'm going to be configuring this switch um, SW1 for triple A and it's going to be using this Windows 2016 uh, server as the radius server. So I'll now be configuring the server. Um, in the previous video I installed network policy server so here in network policy server we need to add our radius client so our radius client is going to be the switch show IP interface brief you can see the IP address of our switch is 172.16.0.253 I'm going back now into the Windows 2016 server here by radius clients uh, this is underneath you see a radius clients and servers push that arrow and you right click on radius clients and you say new and here you give it a friendly name you could type anything you want but it's SW1 uh, the IP address of the switch 172.16.0.253 the shared secret this is the um, radius server shared secret so this secret will be entered here on the Windows 2016 server but it's also going to be entered on the uh, Cisco iOS switch I'll show you just now so here by the shared secret I'm going to make it 88 eight, so it's 8888 eight, 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 eight. I'm just going to confirm that quickly And uh, here by advanced, um, the vendor's name is Cisco. So under radius clients, we have our switch with its IP 172.16.0.253. And I'm just going to go into it quickly. And obviously, the only setting really, there's two settings here there's the IP address of the switch and the shared secret. Now, we need to set up usernames and passwords. So, this start button here is the start button for the Windows uh, 2016 server. This bottom one is my own computer, so just not to get confused. Um, right click here, and we're going to see if this is going to work. Um, I think we need to go to computer management so it doesn't take too long to install ah, there we go and here we've got let's gonna scroll up quickly local users and groups so first I'm gonna make my groups so new group um, I said earlier we're gonna have um, a level 1 group and a level 15 group. In other words, if your username belongs to group 1, then when you log in, you'll be in user mode. If your username belongs to group 15, and you log in, then you'll be in enable mode. So I'm just going to call this um, group 1. And a description, I'm just going to say Dash priv level equals one. Nothing really needs to be here. So there's group one, and the next one we're going to make is group fifteen, and he's going to have a priv level equal to fifteen. That's just a description. That really does nothing. That's what I've typed here. So create that and close there's our two groups group 1 group 15 now we need to create some users just going to create two one for each group new user and um, we said we're going to have the main user his name's Cisco and it really doesn't matter what you type here um, let me give him a password of capital C I S C O with 
two dot list signs. Capital C I S C O with two dot list signs. User must change password at next login. No, I don't need that. User cannot change password. Password never expires. Those things are self-explanatory. So this user, I wanted to be a level 15 user. And what does it say? The following error occurred. Ah, the password doesn't match well. I mean, sorry, the password is not complicated enough. No problem. We will put some more dollar signs on it. So capital C I S C O dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, four dollar signs. C I S C O. Let's see if that's gonna work. Boy. Oh well, I know one that worked yesterday, so let's see. Capital S E C R E T dollar sign dollar sign. Uh, capital S E C R E T dollar sign dollar sign. Great. Okay, that user worked. So we're just going to use the password secret with two dollar signs for both users. Bit stupid, but uh, don't know if Oh, time right now to think of another password. Okay, so the other user is going to be called uh, NetAdmin. And we're going to give him a password of secret $2 signs. Secret with $2 signs. User must change password at next login. No, we don't need that. User cannot change password. Password never expires. Create. Oh, uh -huh. nearly made a huge mistake here. It's not net admin, but net 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 admin. Okay, create. Close that. So let's go to those groups quickly and group 15. Uh, add to group. We want to put the user in there. So who do we want to put in group 15? That's a user called Cisco. So I think we can just type here Cisco and say check name. And it finds it, and we go OK. And then for group one, we right click, um, add to group. We want to add this user called net admin. In this, case, I'm just going to show you the other way to do it, which is click advanced, click find now. It's a quick search, and oh. there we go. Net. Okay. Bingo. So, in group 1, you've got the net admin user. In group 15, you've got the Cisco user. So now we've got our two user groups. So I'm closing this, this computer management dialog. So we're back to network policy server. So here by policies. Um, yeah, under connection policies, I'm just going to get rid of these. You don't have to get rid of them. To be honest, I don't even know what they do. Um, so right click here, uh, new. So the first policy is going to be for um, privilege 15. So I'm just going to call it priv 15 underscore policy. Um, here you press next. Then it says specify the conditions that determine whether this network policy is evaluated for a connection request minimum of one condition is required so we click your add and we want to use windows groups so you click add add group so if the person is part of group 15 then they should be allowed to log in so this one's group 15 so check name there we go press ok ok 
So if the person has an account that's part of group 15, they'll be good to go. Next, um, yeah, we want to grant them access. Next, okay, here you uncheck everything except for this one that says PAP SPAP. And you click next, and here it's you just say no. Alright, this stuff here works, but it's self explanatory, so I'm not really going to show you how it works. But session timeout that's how long the person will be able to log in the router before they get kicked off. Day and time restrictions you, you tick that box, edit, you know, you select here what days they can log in. Um, I have tested it, it does work, but I'm not going to use it in this um, video. Click next. Alright, so when someone logs in with the uh, triple A username and password on the Cisco router and it gets verified by this radio server the radio server needs to pass um, some attributes back um, to the switch so under there's two parts to this you need a standard attribute that's going to give back and a vendor attribute well standard attributes you can get rid of this um, frame protocol you can go we need service type, but the service type mustn't be framed, it must be log login. So you press your edit and you select your others and you change this to login. If you actually use uh, Wireshark and you see what happens with the um, when you use triple A, you will see this um, parameter login get passed back to the switch after you enter your username and password. So here uh, under radius attributes, the standard one service type login and under vendor specific you select your add again and this is really strange but you have to drag right to the bottom and select vendor specific again now a mistake I made in the beginning and this can really pickle you uh, is if you try and select the Cisco here that doesn't work so in the beginning I was like um, you know select vendor specific I click add uh, sorry it's a bit slow and then I'd select Cisco in this list and like I can tell you that's not going to work so you got to scroll right to the bottom vendor specific again add there you click add select from a list so here we select Cisco. Uh, does it conform? Yes, it conforms. Configure attribute. And here's the second thing you got to remember. This vendor assigned attribute number needs to be a 1. If you leave it at 0, it doesn't work. And you need to change this to uh, a string value. If you find you can't type the um, information in here, that's because you've got this set on hexadecimal. And it only allows the hexadecimal digit, so you set your string anyway the command is shell colon uh, prv dash l v l is equal to 15 I hope that is right let me see does it look right shell colon prv dash l v l honestly can't remember right now but that looks close enough um, Send a press OK and OK there and OK there and close. So if somebody logs in um, with the username Cisco from that switch after we've configured AAA, um, this radius server is going to pass them two attributes. It's going to give them this um, attribute of service type login and it's going to give them the second attribute which is going to say shell colon priv dash level is equal to 15 and that's supposed to get the switch directly into enable mode. Yeah, you click next and finish. So this is just for group 15. And uh, after you set it up, you can actually just double click it and see, have a quick look through it to see if it looks right. So here by conditions, we see, okay, the person must belong to group 15. Constraints, here's where you can set times that they can log in. The protocols are right. And here by settings, we see that um, 
we are returning a standard attribute of service type login and a vendor specific attribute of shell colon priv dash level equals 15 so that's all good to go now I'm going to add the one for user level access so here have our network policies right click new and uh, so I see what I called the other one so I can make this one go well with that one uh, this one's going to be priv one underscore policy and click next add windows groups add group this time do it the other way because I just typed um, group 15 there before I'm going to show you the other way just click advanced in case you don't remember the group's name click find now and there's group 1 click OK 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 so the person matches group 1 we're good to go and then we're going to grant them access and here we don't want to use anything except this uh, pap spap um, click next no right here you can um, set the session timeout and what times of day a person can log in uh, what's this day and time restrictions I showed you that earlier click next and here we're gonna s do it the same as before service type I said must be um, login and the vendor attribute we need to select a custom one right here at the bottom scroll down vendor specific add you select add uh, yeah you select Cisco yes it conforms mm, configure attribute remember to make this a one and here we're going to have shell uh, shell aha you see I made that mistake I pointed out earlier I forgot to change it to string so it's shell colon prv dash lvl equals one press ok and here we press OK and OK and add. No. What? No. Ah, I'm supposed to press close. Sorry. So when somebody logs in from a uh, Group One account, they'll be returned this um, vendor-specific attribute of shell colon prop dash LVL is equal to one, and they'll only be in user mode. Okay, that's right, that's right, and here you click next, finish. Alright, um, so let's just recap what we've done here. Under Radius Clients, um, this is the Radius Client, which is, if we look here again, this is the switch. Just to show you quickly what's cooking here, the switch still doesn't have any password on it show IP interface brief okay that's our switch 253 we still need to f configure triple A on the switch um, this is our network policy server so our switch is configured as a radius client um, not much settings here it's just the IP address of the switch 172.16.0.253 there's a shared secret which we're going to be entering on the switch this is 8 8 times it's just 8 8 8 8 and advanced means vendor name is Cisco so for every device in your topology you're going to have to have a s add it as a separate radius client because every device is going to have a different IP so you'll have quite a few radius clients appearing here uh, for your topology but um, here under actual policies network policies um, if you're going to make a simple one like mine you're only going to need two where you've got the one that authenticates people in an advanced group that will um, when they log in immediately go to privilege mode and the other people who's only going to get privilege level of one when they log in so they'll have to type enable 
enable and then enter a password if they want to go to enable mode. Um, I'm going to end this video right here and in the third part of the video I will set up the switch. Thank you for watching.